Kobavad. But of course, he is part of a tradition that has defined our fourth Republican history. And so we'll spend a, a few more time talking about that too. Mr. Chamantin, thank you very much thank for joining you. us on Joy News and also on Joy 99.7 FM. Thank you, Vance. You've been very busy in the last few days. Yes, indeed. I, um, yeah. you know, and I was listening to you on Monday yeah. and you were talking about the, how long you've served the MPP since 1992. And like when a, a divorce happened, you wonder outside and you say, does it feel strange to be looking at the party you've served all your life from the outside since Monday when you, when you called it quits? It must feel strange. Well, I don't see that as being strange. Um, I'm a founding member of the party. I've served the party in various capacities and in government. I believe with distinction. It's time for me to move on, and I've moved on. So basically, uh, there are no bad ill feelings. I, I've moved on, and, and that's what it is. And, and, and since Monday, have any of your good friends in the party called to try and see if there's any possibility of bringing you back. Yesterday I was speaking to one of your good friends, good yeah. opinion on my show, I don't know if you listen. Yeah. And he says, the party should try, try and get you back. Has anybody reached out? Well, um, I've been busy, so I haven't had time to have that interaction um, uh, directly. <clears throat> but um, I've moved on. You go independent? Yes. Why? Well, because uh, even what I think Ghana needs now, looking at where we are as a country, where we've come from, where we are and where we want to go, my sense is that what we need is a new leader, not a new party or set of parties. Because we are talking about how to transform our country. We've been going through, what, 60 years, 66 years of nationhood with varying fortunes. You have a dominance of two parties, a duopoly, since 1992, I guess. But that hasn't significantly transformed and changed the fortunes of our country. My sense is that, yes, there's a role of political, there's a role for political parties in our uh, democratic governance structure. But when it comes to selecting a leader, the presidential uh, candidate to elect a presidential candidate to become the president, my sense is that you are looking to elect someone on his own merit, his or her own merit. Because, you know, we, we have a constitution that seems to locate very strong powers to one man, who is the president. So I believe that the nature of the powers and authority that the Constitution grants to this one man requires us to select that individual on the basis of what he has done, what he can do in the future by himself, not on the basis of the party. But then obviously because we have a legislature, you need the parties to be able also to mobilize their constituencies and their constituents to select individuals who will represent them in parliament. Mm -hmm. But those are two different functions, the legislative function and the executive function. So in a situation where the divisive nature of our politics has kind of drawn us back with our development, it only makes sense that for the first time in the history of our party, 
that we should try a new model, a model where you have an honest broker, uh, somebody who sits in the middle and is able to governize, support, and bring different interest groups, political interest groups, business interest groups, you know, people from all walks of life, rich, poor, young, old, together in a government of national unity. Because what I believe is impeding our progress is that there's too much politicking now associated with the functions of government mm. and the functions of parliament. So my change agenda that I'm hoping to pursue has four dominant themes. Mm. And we'll come to explore that in detail. Yeah. But what yeah. convinces you yeah. that Ghanaians are ready for an independent country? Oh, it's not about Ghanaians being ready for an independent candidate. It's about making a case for an independent candidate. Is that an it's about that? making a case for an independent candidate on the basis of what the current model um, has done for Is that an admission country. that you concede we are not ready yet, but you want to attempt to change that? Well, it's, change our minds to see you as a credible alternative to the duopoly? Yes, because as I've explained, we've had varying fortunes in terms of our own country's advancement and development. In my considered opinion, the duopoly has created more division in our politics than otherwise. So why do we want to continue on that tangent? Why would you want to continue on that tangent? Why would you, ex why would you think that the results will be any different going for forward with the same kind of, uh, of, of model? So, like everything else, if it doesn't work, you think outside the box. By the way, this is not the first experience in, in Africa, for example, where you have an independent candidate becoming the president of a republic. In Benin, close by, the current president, a very successful one, came in as an independent candidate, completely outside the existing parties. In his case, in actual fact, he came from the business uh, community. So it is not that it, it, it cannot be done. The fact that it's not been done in Ghana does not mean that it cannot be done and does not mean that that is what we need to do. The so Benny, I'm making a case for it. The Benny example, you say he was completely out of the, the Yes, system. political, yes. Alan Chaman thing is a product yeah. of the duopoly. Yeah. You're a product of the system. Yeah. Why should voters trust you that you'll be different? Why would people do it? Why should voters trust you that you'll be different when you are a product of the duopoly? Well, but if you're a product of the duopoly and the analysis suggests that the duopoly has not conveyed the kind of benefits that the duopoly should, then the fact that somebody who has been part of the duopoly cannot be the agent for change. I'm trying to understand where the logic would be that because you've been part of a particular system, <clears throat> you cannot be the change agent for another business model. There's nothing to suggest that the fact that you're part of a system, that you cannot come out of the system to lead a change process. You, the, the reason why that is obviously an issue yeah. is your, your critique of the system. The system is the yeah. reason why we are where we are. Yes, one of the reasons. One of the reasons. Yes, yes. Then it stands to reason that yeah. if you've been part of it, then you've also been part of the reason why we are where we are. Yes, but it doesn't matter that you've been part of the system. If you can come out of the system and be the agent of change, because we are looking at how do we improve 
our chances of advancement. The current system has not worked for us. Are you seeming to suggest that we should continue to do exactly the same thing? But are you the and, one and, to do it differently? And in actual fact, in my case, I believe so. Because even whilst I've been part of the current um, model, I've always preached that we need to be able to prosecute a political agenda that moves Ghana towards a united government. I've always preached that. When did you and, do and, that and, and, and that, how? And, and that, is, that is why you find that um, I cut across the political divide. You say you did that. I'm, I'm curious. You do yeah. this when you were in government, when in cabinet? Well, that has been part of my political... I don't know whether you know me well enough. That is what but I'm asking. That, yeah, but that has been... Well, many people listening to you yes, wondering. Yeah. So when he says he did that, yeah. you did that when you were part of the system, and how did you do it? Oh, how do I, how do, I do it? My perspectives on politics, my this disposition, the, the kinds of development orientation that I have pursued. So the fact that you have not monitored that or you have not been in a position to know my thinking on these matters would not suggest that it has not been Did you try the to case. get the system whilst you were in it to appreciate these views when well, you were in there? But I'm saying that I've, that has been my perspective. And, and how forcefully and, did you push and, it? Though? And, and, and the fact that it has not been able to change the status quo provides a reason for me to come out of the start system because you have an option to create change within a particular system that you find yourself in. If that is not working, does it not provide a reason for you to come out of that system and now chart a new path towards what you believe to be the preferred path. And I'm curious why it didn't hold sway with your own colleagues when you were in the system, when you were pushing this. But, but even, I, I, I'm not sure that I should answer that question. I'm not sure why I should answer that question. And it is not, they, they about, it, it, it is not about trying to change the mindset of other people within my party alone. We are talking about Ghana, an agenda to change Ghana. So if that understanding of my perspective does not dominate the politics in the system that I find myself, I don't see any reason why I cannot take my, my case directly to the people of Ghana. Because after all, ultimately, we owe the authority and power to to govern to the people. And so I'm taking my case directly to the people. I would have preferred that I would have used the vehicle that I helped to nurture, which is my party. I would have hoped that that would have been the vehicle to pursue that development orientation that I believe in. But hey, if it's not possible, why not? Why wasn't it possible? Well, it's difficult to, it's got to make that judgment. I mean, you, you can't get that answer from me alone. You have to, next time you have the opportunity, try and find out from other people, you know, why is it that we have not been able to work towards a more united governance structure? You, you, because you... Of, obviously, the kind of politics that has characterized the duopoly. Mm -hmm. Now, it's what leads to a winner-takes-all agenda. Do you understand me? I'm saying that, that, that this system is what generally leads to a winner-takes-all political uh, system. And I don't believe in that. So I believe that 
if you have talent that resides in in other uh, uh, political organizations if you have talent that resides in the business community if you have talent that resides in in the labor community um, if you believe that the youth ought to be the vanguard of the development of our nation and if that's not possible within the constraints of mm. the kind of political thought process in your own party is there anything wrong if you come out of the system to advance that course i do not, I do not see why and, and as we exploring yes. your vision yes you have said and i've been asking you about yes. Your contributions, because yeah. you were part of the system, you were saying yes. you, were, you were raising these issues yeah. you wanted to yeah. raise, but you didn't have yeah. enough yeah. traction there. Yeah. You've said in your press conference that you now are at a place where you're convinced yeah. that that system you were part of yeah. no longer appreciated yeah. what you had to offer. Yes. But the evidence suggests otherwise. This is a system in the party that gave you an opportunity to serve as a trade minister. That is definitely appreciating you as an individual and what you bring to the table in yeah. contrary to the agenda for change, at least yeah. from the MPP's yeah. point of view. But I think you are missing the point. So let me just illustrate it. So, as individuals in a party, in government, my belief is that we need to prioritize, let's say, industrialization or private sector development. I mean, the basic principle in economics is that you operate on the principle of scarcity and choice. So you have to prioritize. So you deploy resources in line with your priorities. My sense is that for a country like ours, for us to be able to transform our country, Let's say we need to prioritize industrialization. Now, if it doesn't happen that that becomes the dominant view, let's say in the party, in the party, for example, or in, in government, then it makes sense for me to pursue an ambition to occupy the highest level of executive authority that allows me to prioritize what I believe will bring about the change and transformation. Simba, you were part of a government that yes. made industrialization a priority. Yes. yes. That put you in charge yes. of yeah. executing yes. what one time you believed to yes. be one of the boldest mm. agendas to industrialize, one industry, one factory. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you say then yeah. that you didn't have enough traction around yeah. the vision that you had? That definitely yeah. was one that you were in charge of, executing. Yeah, but, but even I don't think you are listening to me or you are listening, but you are not understanding what I'm saying. I'm talking about prioritizing the deployment of resources to be able to achieve a certain objective. But that was so, a priority for, example, for your party, wasn't no, it? No, I'm talking about deploying resources. So, so if that is their priority... Did, did they exist in name then? Because you were inside. What, 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 for, us, for us who stood outside no, and listened to you I want to, to understand before, you said it the, existed the, in The priority that yes. you championed. Yes. Yeah. We, the belief we had and That's what we had. I championed. That you championed. Yes, I championed. Yes. So it, like didn't, championed. it didn't mean that. It didn't you said mean you didn't have the resources. I, but that's, that's clear. And, and I'm, I'm suggesting to you that if you have a, a governance structure with different priorities, and because of limited resources, the decision, for example, and arguably that could be one way to proceed. If, for example, we decide to prioritize one sector over the other, well, that's the one does executive one factor decision. was a flagship policy. But we had many flagship pol policies. Yeah, but was uh, one uh, uh, yes, of the flagships, but which I'm means saying, that it's been prioritized, and therefore no, you expect but, resources to go there. But, but I, I guess you're still not listening to you. I'm saying that if you have a number of flagship programs and you have limited resources, of course, 
then you deploy the resources based on the type of priority settings that you may have. And I'm saying that one individual may prioritize education above industrialization. Somebody may prioritize digitization above uh, industrialization. Another may prioritize health over, because you have limited resources. So I'm submitting that in my case, although you have all these as priorities and flagship programs, the allocation of resources, which is the basis for achieving optimum levels of growth in a particular sector. If that is what I believe in, then when I occupy the highest level of executive authority, then I can reorder the priorities and deploy resources in, in a manner that allows me uh, to be able to realize my vision. I mean, and my yeah. question that I've been asking is, yeah. because I'm talking to Alan Chamanting, yeah. who has yeah. a history yeah. in government, yeah. what you're suggesting is, now if you get to stand by yourself, then that becomes a sole priority where you put in the resources. Not sole priority. Uh, in one, I mean, the, the, the priority, most important, important priority, yes. where you put resources. Yes. It stands to reason that you're yeah. also suggesting that although you were trade minister, you didn't yeah. have the required resources. The required resources but to there's, deliver. There's That's no what you're There's no doubt about that. But this is something that you can easily interrogate. I mean, look at the allocation of resources amongst the flagship programs. It's, it's very easy to verify that. And I mean, obviously. But that wasn't the picture the, the, we got when you were in charge. We but, got but, a picture but, that everything but, was OK. But don't talk about the picture that you, you I mean, if that's my and, priority. And you give us a picture because you were the minister then, that everything was fine. You were executing a project. You had the resources. You were achieving one district, one factory. But, but, but respectfully, uh, I'm not sure that I understand what you are saying, that I gave the impression yeah. that I had all the resources. Yes, you did. What, what was the basis of that impression? Because that you each got? time you give us an update yeah. on the one district, one factory, yeah. never once did you say that, listen, we, we don't have all the resources to do this in the way that you wanted it to. Uh, when, 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 when did you engage me in a conversation where this matter came up? How many times have you had an interaction with me? So you cannot make a, a judgment uh, in, in a vacuum unless you had specifically had an engagement with me, with me in which, and at any rate, does it require me to make public statements about the decisions that we've taken in budget, in cabinet, about the deployment of resources? Is that appropriate for me to make public pronouncements about the fact that I believe that we should prioritize industrialization in terms of deployment of resources. Is that what you are suggesting? Is that basis? Is that the basis for, uh, for, for, for sitting uh, in, 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 as part of cabinet that you go around making pronouncements? Is that what you are? Because I'm, I'm trying to understand why either you find it strange or you are suggesting that you didn't hear me talk about it. And because if you had a personal conversation with me and that issue had come up, then I would say that, yes, even... I have the opportunity you know. now. How hard did you fight for what you believe in when you were in cabinet? How hard? I, I, don't think, I don't think that should be the subject matter for this discussion. I've explained to you that the public records are there. If you are an investigative journalist, you do investigation thoroughly, it is very easy for you to check the budget allocation, you know, for various flagship programs, and you get the answer there. The answer will lie in the belly of the statistics. So we don't need to spend mm. executive, time, ask, executive time belaboring this point. Yeah, because you can questions. find that information by yourself. And if, for example, you are coming into an interview, you know, and you wanted to understand why I'm now talking about prioritizing industrialization and being in government, we we'll probably have done that research. Um, and uh, have, but, have but, but, but you were the man in charge. I'm just asking the yeah. man in charge. Yeah. Where else would you get primary information than the man who was in charge? 
And I'm asking you right now that I, question. I, I, I would suggest to you that that source of information is available publicly. But you were the I, ultimate I, I, voice on this matter. So it's fair to ask you these questions as well, well because you are the ultimate. Uh, let's move on because yes. I think, but, that, but I ask you these I think that you can, you, you, that's what you need to do as a media man, you know, go to the public records because what I tell you may not necessarily be the case. Well, you, you, there is certainty, more certainty in public records. So why would you not check the public records and find out? But, but I still need to ask you, which is what I was asking okay. you. But the reason, right. the reason why I was asking these yeah. questions yeah. About, about that work, yeah. well, because since you announced your resignation, yeah. the MPP yeah. had held a press conference. And I've branded what you've said, a lot of what you said, as untrue, in addition to um, some what, of the things what, that you've what claimed. What is not true? What did they say? That's For example, true. you said that the party had been hijacked by a certain group of people. They said yeah. that is absolutely yeah. not true. Yeah. They, they've actually held a press conference to say, in addition yeah. to that, that you said the superdelegates conference has been skewed to favor one candidate. Yeah, yeah. They emphatically, yeah. again, in the press conference, yeah. say that yeah. is simply not true uh -huh. because almost 900 plus people who voted could all not have been skewed yeah. for one person. Yeah. They have challenged you on yeah. that, on yeah. that matter. And, and if you want to be president, integrity yeah. is key. Yeah. You've listened to the party say, yeah. what you put out as fundamental reason for quitting, hijacking the party, yeah. the skewing of the superdelegates, are all not true, just making up excuses to leave. Evans, very respectfully, I granted you an opportunity for this interview, not for me to discuss the press conference of the NPP. I've made an open declaration that I want to set a record in Ghana to ask the people of Ghana to elect me as the first independent candidate to become president because I believe that that is the model that will help our country move forward. My desire is for you to focus on that for the benefit of the people of Ghana. And the three core functions of journalism is to educate, inform, and entertain. So your primary responsibility in interviewing someone who has put forward a plan, a case, to interrogate me on these matters, I have no appetite or interest in having a banter about what I have said and what uh, party officials are saying. I, I don't think that it, it helps me and the people of this country to keep on having conversations. And this is not the first media interview that I've had. Mm. Look, I'm part of a system. I've been a senior member of a party. I've done what I can. Mm -hmm. It was time for me to move on. I've moved on. Let's talk about the future. Mm. That is well the case, and we'll yeah. do that. That's how we started yes. talking about yeah. your vision, and we'll return to that substantively. Okay. But as you all know, you're a politically astute yes. individual. Yeah. That in any campaign, as you yeah. run as president, yeah. Yeah. your record always comes up yes. for yes. scrutiny. Yes. Now, yeah. it's... It's in line with that, that yeah. these questions are important yeah. because you have strong voices, yeah. people that you are, you are friends with and you were in the same group with. Yeah. Question that very track record. Yeah. Well, you, question which you, track you, record? The track record of some of the things you've said when you were exiting. Yeah. And I believe yeah. it's right to put that to you. Yeah. To address it if you want to. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I, do not, I, I what, do not want and, to do except, that. Except you say you don't, you don't, you don't want I, to address I, I, those track record issues that have been raised. I, I told you that I didn't have the appetite to have a banter about that. Mm. I've put out a public statement that, in my view, based on the combination of circumstances and the processes that were involved in the run up to the superdelegates conference pronouncements that in my view, in my considered opinion, that the processes have been skewed in favor of one. That is my own assessment. 
If somebody else feels that that is not his assessment, why do we have to spend executive time to debate that? And what is your interest? What is your interest in debating that? Because that is, that is, that is my position on the matter. Mm. And everybody else is at liberty to have their own opinion about this matter. Mm. So I uh, very respectfully feel that this is not um, the proper use of, of, of time for us to now make a case. If I make this case now, they've made their case. Let the people decide. It's as simple as that. And, and you say the people must decide. Yes. One of the things that you put before the people yeah. when you did your press conference yes. was this great transformational plan. Yes. You say, quote, 10 pillars, mm -hmm. one of them, yeah. promoting industrial transformation. And, and I want uh, to... Just on a point of, of order. Have you read my statement? I, I, I want to, I no, want to, no, I'm asking you a direct I, question. If, if, Have what, you read my statement? When I finish, you understand. Okay. Quote, if I'm quoting, means yes, I've read it. Yes. So that's my answer yes, to you. Yes, yes. Through value addition yes. and the establishment of strategic anchor industries, yes. this is you, to diversify the Ghanaian economy. Yes. This will also involve the establishment of industrial parks yes. and special economic zones. Yes as well as the aggressive promotion of small and medium-scale enterprise yes, development. Yes. That is one of the pillars. Yes. Now, the key but, question but, I have... But, but, but if, 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 I said if a I point may, of order, if, respectfully. No, I if said I may, if a point, I may, do you ask, understand a point of order? I've, I've asked because for this is a an point interview. of order. I don't yes. because you're but I, I need to ask my question, then you understand how what I'm you, saying. How do you interview somebody and you do not allow him no, to First to of all, is this, is this part of your ten pillars? But that's the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, but I would like to raise ask, the point I'd like order. to ask my question, based on what you have said. We're, we're interrogating the vision, which is what you yeah. said you wanted to do. Yes. Yes. So let me ask the question. My question is, mm. promoting industrial transformation. Yes. You had four years yeah. as trade minister under yeah. Don Kofor. You've had six years of trade minister yeah. under Nanado. Yeah. A combination of 10 years. Yeah. If you didn't do yeah. what you're proposing now to do in the future, in 10 years, yes. Yeah. Why should we trust that you can do it now? Yeah. I'll, I'll come back to correcting uh, what you said. And I expect you, um, since you're a seasoned journalist, to read your material uh, before the interview. It, it does not say that the transformation plan has 10 pillars. If you read it, it's not 10 pillars. It's the industrial transformation component of the transformation plan that has the 10 pillars. Well, I'm asking so, you... So you need to understand... I'm asking you a specific question, yes, uh, Mr. Yeah. Chavante, yeah. about the Great Transformational Plan. And yeah. am isolating... Yeah. And am isolating yeah. your promoting industrial transformation? Yes, yes. That's all I'm asking. No, no, but then... That's, then the, the 10... is not... The transformational I, plan I, I don't want is to focus different from on, the industrial transformation. I, I, it's I'm one component. You, I'm asking you a question yes. about the industrial But why don't plan? you admit then that the transformation plan is the broader plan? The industrial component is only one component. I, I take your word for it. Okay. I, I take your word that, for that, 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 my, my question stands. Yes. Okay. Promote industrialization. Yes. I'm saying, I'm asking a simple question. Yeah. You've had a total of 10 years, yeah. John Kufo, yeah. President uh, Akufuado, yeah. yeah. as trade minister, mm -hmm. to champion that. Yeah. If in 10 years you haven't done this, why should we trust that you can do this now? But are you making a judgment on the fact that it has not been done? And what is the basis of your judgment? Because here you are, you are referring to an industrial transformation plan that I have put forward. And you're making a judgment that it has not been done. What is the basis for that judgment? Well, because if, um, again, I think you have to give me the opportunity to speak. You are interviewing me. Allow me to speak. I think or I'm doing that. Now you want me to be, you want to be the one that is basically being interviewed? I think I'm doing so, that. So, so, so I'm wondering why you are making a judgment that I've had 10 years and I've not been able to do it. What is the basis? What is the basis for that conclusion that you've come to? You've said yes. in your plan that this yes. is something you want to do. It's your plan, it's your vision. Yes. Is it your vision or not? Yes. If it's a, it's a vision, yes. it means in the inheriting that is a belief 
is in the statement yeah. that this is something that hasn't been done that you plan to do. I'm very surprised that you make that, it's a, it's that a, conclusion. It's a so, vision, please, is it not? So, for example, you say that my vision is to, let's say, generate, or let's, let's put it simply that, that you want to transform Ghana. Just listen to me carefully. You want to transform Ghana. And you have a plan for that, the Great Transformational Plan. And if you read it, there are 15 components of this transformational plan, not 10. That's what I wanted to correct you uh, on. Now, one of the components of the transformational plan is industrial transformation. And now you are seeming to suggest that because that is part of the transformational plan, it means that it has not been done. Has it been done? To a very large extent. If, 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 you you if, said, if, let, if, if we, let's read if, the specifics. Yes, yes. Yeah. True value addition. Yes. The establishment of strategic anchor yes. industries. Can we just stay on to those To diversify yes. the Ghanaian economy. Yes, can we just stay You're on that You're saying that as we speak right yes, now, yes, yeah. we have true value addition. Yes, yes. And establish tra uh, yeah. strategic anchor to yes. diversify the yes. Ghanaian economy. Yes, yes. So let's stay on that. And I'm a bit surprised that uh, you've, not done that, you've not done your I mean, homework. I mean, it's a simple question you, I'm asking. You're, you're, saying, your you're saying that but, as we speak right now in this can, country... Can I answer the question that We have put diversified the Ghanaian economy can, can to value addition. Can you allow me to answer the questions? Very respectfully. I'm not under investigation. No, you're, you're not. not interrogating. Absolutely And you not. have no right to posture your interviewing as if... Uh, You've, make it, you've made up your mind about, uh, about what is it that you are. So you ask a question. You, 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 you are looking at a number of things that it's on paper I have uh, talked about. So allow me to answer. Number one, value addition. Have you heard about the One District, One Factory Initiative? We've it's talked, a direct question. We've, we've, Have you heard we've, talked about, about we've it? talked about that in this interview. So you've heard about one district, one factory. 80%. I'll probably even think that it's more than that. Of what has been in, 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 involved in the one district, one is value addition. Either agro processing or garment and textiles. And you name it. Mm. I mean, because that is what industrialization is about. It's about value addition. Mm. So the one district one factory program, to a large extent, represents the value addition efforts that I've been talking about. So what else do you want to, I mean, what are you talking about? A joint president of the first time, I introduced the Presidential Special Initiatives. I talked about four sectors at that time. Garments and textiles, oil palm, industrial salt, and industrial starch from cassava. Even at that time, I was still talking about value addition. All these sectors, and if we had time, we can have a, a very decent conversation about the presidential special initiatives. Those were examples of value addition. So you're asking me about value addition. If, 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 if you've done your homework, you would know that whether it's under the PSIs or whether it's under the uh, one district, one factory. That's all about value addition. So, so let's move on to so no, the no, next point. It's, it's important yeah. that this question yeah. is, is, yeah. is something I put to you. So yeah. this is a vision of yours. Yes. It's a vision. Yes. It's a place you want to take Ghana. Yes, yes. But here you are saying yes. that you've already done it. Do you understand? That what it's a vision. vision. 
It's a vision. It's a place yeah. you want to take us. It's a reason yeah. why you want to be independent. I think. And and I'm asking. I'm asking. Some, I'm asking some yeah. Yeah. that you want to get there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'm asking because yeah. something you've stated very clearly. Yeah. One, everybody wants to know first. What did you do in your time? Which yeah. is what you've explained. Yes, okay? I've explained. Exactly. But you accept and, and then, that. Oh, I, you know, okay. I don't, I don't have, right. a, I don't have an opinion on that. Okay. And then okay. the next question is, yeah. how do you plan to achieve this specifically? Yes. How do you plan to get us to this vision that you've articulated, which is which is what I write for you? What's the plan if, to get there? If that? you have a vision, it would, it it would symbolize that it is a vision that you realize over a period of time. Do you understand that clearly? That you realize that in incremental stages over a period of time. So the ultimate, when you get there, you would have fulfilled your vision. But it evolves. Mm. <laughs> the vision is not realized as an event. It evolves. And what I'm suggesting to you, that if you've done your homework, all these initiatives, whether it's the PSIs or 1D1F, would demonstrate that that process of industrialization, value addition, has been initiated. And because it's a process, and the ultimate goal, for example, will be the manufacturing hub or the industrial hub in Africa. So you may not be there yet, but that's the vision. There are incremental stages to get to that vision. But the good thing is that, exactly as you said, I've made significant landmark achievements towards realizing the vision. So I'm not sure why you have a conceptual difficulty in understanding because this is my vision and that I've started, and so I cannot talk about it being my vision. Is that what you're suggesting? No, it's a question. Well, but if you're asking a question, how, how, you, how you, you should you plan, how you, I mean, this is just okay. a, a simple right. question. Okay. About the specific steps, and you laid a bit out yes. when, when you did yeah. the press conference. Yeah. Yeah. How you plan to take us to that yeah. promised yeah. land? Yeah. For which reason you want to stand as an independent yes. candidate? Yeah. Yeah. And your answer to that is that you've laid the foundations. I've laid the as, foundations. Yes. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yes. And, that, that, and, that's, and, and that's, the, that's the foundation. And the, and the material difference is that if I have the opportunity to occupy the highest level of executive authority, then I am empowered to be able to realize that vision much quicker. That's the whole narrative. Any time frame for you? Well... I've said that I want 25, uh, 2025 to 2025 to be what I describe Ghana's decade of transformation, industrial transformation. So that's the target. And if you look at the, the, the GTP, it provides a sense of the kind of things that I believe would help us and GTP, by the way, is a great transformational plan. Sorry? The GTP, by the way, is a great yeah, transformational plan. Yeah, the great transformational plan. plan. So if you look at the great transformational plan, the first pillar in the transformational plan is how to fix our economy. Because if you don't have a stable macroeconomic environment, then you cannot go on to be talking about industrial transformation. You cannot talk about agricultural revolution which are all components of the transformational plan. So if you take your time and read the transformational plan, there are, it's not just the framework, because you need a framework first, but there are specific policy prescriptions that I have recommended, which will help us stabilize our currency, which will help us to bring inflation down uh, to single digits on a sustainable basis. How do you do that? Well, we don't have time to go into all the policy prescriptions. Oh, but just, I'm saying, just on the but, two you mentioned. Yes. 
Because stable it's, currency. It's, yes, yes, it's a current that, live yeah, yes, challenge. Yes, absolutely. That's what yeah. called stable yeah. currency. What's your prescription? So, so the whole point about currency stabilization is the supply and demand of foreign exchange. That's what currency stabilization is about. If you export more, you are able to earn more foreign exchange resources. If you, are, if you earn more foreign exchange resources and you reduce the use of forex to import, that's if you start producing things locally, which you were importing, then you save foreign exchange. And meanwhile, if you are exporting, you get more foreign exchange. So the supply of foreign exchange increases. When the supply of foreign exchange increases, then it means that the ratio of how much you need of local currency to exchange for the dollar, you know, then improves. Because that's basic economics. So, it, and so that is why if, for example, you have limited foreign exchange, then it means that you need more cities, people, more cities are chasing the limited dollar reserve that you have. The moment you have more cities trying to chase the few dollars that you have, then obviously, then it means that your currency is getting weaker. So if, for example, um, you, were, you had to change, let's say, because of supply and demand, if you needed 10 cities uh, to be able to get uh, $1, and all of a sudden you have a limited flow of, uh, uh, of dollars, it means that more people now want dollars. So you have to bid higher. Now you need, mm -hmm. let's say, 20 cities to be able to get $1. That's where the weakening of the local currency occurs. You yes, you, you've stated the, what, what, is, what is known. But, but not the, what is known. The, the, if, the, if it's the, known, the question has yeah, always yeah, been yeah. that yes. politicians always tell us yeah. that this is something they want to do. Yes. But the difference between the rhetoric yes. and the reality, as yes. you well know, because yeah. you've been part of government for yeah. so long, yeah. sometimes it's night and day. Yes, yes. Right? Yeah. And that is where you have yeah. this cynicism towards politicians. Well, but... Um, How does Alain Chamantin want to be different in this area? No, no, I'm different because... What makes you different? You see, first, 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 the person who is talking about it must be able to articulate first what the problem is. How he's going to... execution plan and must demonstrate that he has the capacity to execute the plan. So, for example, on this uh, currency issue, mm. just one currency issue, I'm saying that you need to be able to export more to be able to get more forex. So, what you need to ask me is that, but where is the export going to come from? Because, I mean, you are saying that you are skeptical because politicians talk and it doesn't happen. So, I guided uh, the my ministry to develop a national export strategy mm. which targets an inflow of 25 billion United States dollars by 2030 just through exports. And that is part of my plan. Did you achieve that? No, I'm when saying 2030, we yeah. have the plan, the strategy and the plan. So well, that, is a, that, that, is, that, is the, that is the plan. And so there are intermediate steps. So we started, and the whole point is that if the people of Ghana put their trust and faith in me, and I become president by the grace of God, then I have executive authority to do what will make that export development strategy work, because I'll prioritize but to, those things. But to get there, you have to, you have to defeat the MPP and the NDC. <laughs> You, you have to. And, and we know the duopoly is very, very entrenched. Yeah. Nobody had attempted and succeeded. Mainly before you have actually tried it. Yeah. I mean, your own friend, um, I believe, uh, Raku Bobe, yeah, yeah. I mean, tried it, yeah. didn't succeed. Guzitama yeah. tried it for the NDC, yeah. didn't succeed. Yeah. We have yeah. a little bit of someone else yeah. who tried it. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Pakwisi Indumo broke away from the CEP yeah. and tried it. All of them didn't succeed yeah. in trying to break this duopoly that yeah. you've been part of.
How are you proposing to succeed where all of, all of them have failed? I have a lot of respect for these gentlemen. Uh, they are all my very good friends, very close friends. I cannot speak for them. I can speak for myself. I think that there are things that make my case different. First, because I've been a dominant figure in MPP politics for many years. It's not just because I'm a member of the found. I'm a founding member of the party. I was chairman of the Young Executive Forum, which was one of the most vibrant groups within MPP. Mm. Now, so I have a track record of performance of service to the party and to government. But beyond that, you have now been in this game for some time. You know, I've contested our current president, what, three times? So I have recognition in the rank and file of the party. I'm not a rookie in politics in the MPP. I think that I enjoy massive support, particularly at the grassroots level. Look, super delegates, you know, primaries, you know, that doesn't determine your real strength within the family of MPP. Why do I say so? Averagely, about 6.5 million people in any given election would vote for MPP. Now, even if you go beyond the superdelegates, you go to the general primaries, it's only 210,000 people who vote. Now, you are talking about not a membership base, but a sympathizer base of over 6.5 million MPP sympathizers. So it doesn't matter what the delegates normally would, would think about. The key is how popular is Alan amongst this broader MPP family? And your answer to that is? That the question of how popular have, you are? I have a very strong positioning within that community. And, now, and so when I hear people say, oh, Alan can go... You know, it will not matter. My simple answer is that, wait and see. Let's get to the field and let's wait and see. It is the contest. A grown <laughs> The contest finally uh, will be determined when we have the general election. And, but I'm, but I'm everybody's so, so, so I'm saying that, I'm saying that um, if you're talking about the wider MPP family, Yes, I have, I have a strong presence there. Oh, within the MPP family? Yes, I'm saying that's one part of it. And then, of course, you're talking about the general one. And then within NDC also. But the MPP, they, they, they clearly have said you, you, you don't. Uh, who, who says that? I mean, in, and why in, should that be the basis for... for no, but you, you, for, you, make, you make the point yourself that you're very popular among the MPP states. But we've never had a scientific... the best place to judge. Well, but that's not representative. Right? That's what I'm saying. I'm talking about the wider base. Of the party. Of the wider base is 6.5 million. So permit me to ask if that's the case, why don't you wait till November then? And then the 2000... No. I would have given you the... I that that is a very small... Still too, too small. Oh, against 6.5 million? No, that's, that but, is a sympathizer base. Yeah, no, but it's... The grassroots of the party. Yeah, but the grassroots of the party. Yeah, but when we talk about... NPP. The NPP is not just about delegates or the leaders of the party. That's not the way I see it. Yeah. You know, the wider NPP family. Mm. Yeah, but even you see, you really want to do damage. In other words, you say Look, that in 2024, your core base is going to be crawled from that base as an independent, from that six million plus. But, but, but why do you say damage? I, I don't know. Oh, I mean, of course, if you're taking, why, why you say if, if you're taking the food that you, the, the MPP used to eat, as in those numbers, then yeah. anybody who votes for you from that group yeah. is not but, voting for the MPP. But, but, but also, That's damage. But, but uh, please remember also yeah. that there are two types of elections. There's a parliamentary election and there's a presidential election. If I wanted, quote-unquote, to attack the MPP as a political party, I would have floated a new party. Then that one would have meant that 
Alan is going in directly to provide an alternative as a party to the NDP. Having done that, oh, so you're being chai about it? I mean, all I'm saying is that all I'm saying is that those who are members of the NPP, by all means, have been a founding member of the party. When it comes to parliamentary elections, vote for your uh, parliamentary candidate oh, so of you, choice. You MPP, vote for your MPP parliamentary yes, candidate. Yes, candidate of your choice. I mean, there's no problem with that. NDC, vote for your candidate of choice. But when it comes to the presidential election, because you are looking for someone who on his own merit, and that's the difference, not on the back of the party, because you are talking about an executive president, someone who on the, on the strength of his own merit mm. can make a difference, then vote for Alan. But that would so mean, that's, that, that would that's, mean that's, the MPP also that, will not get the president. Well, presidency. I mean, uh, I, I, don't, I don't want to be president just for MPP. I want to be president for the whole of Ghana. I guess let me that's ask you, what an executive let me ask president you is let me about. Ask you yeah. Would you admit that at least your core base, and you've talked about it, you're, yeah. you're very, you say you, you believe you're very popular within the MPP, yes, that yeah. core base, if you stand, yes. the people who vote for you, most likely, yes. majority of them, yes. mainly, will come from the MPP base. Is that, you, you can see that? Based on your uh, popularity? Yes, 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 absolutely. Yeah. A significant will come back. But then also, I would be able to make a significant difference with floating voters. Because a floating voter, by definition, is neither a sympathizer of MPP nor a sympathizer of NDC. They are independent. They are swayed by conviction. They are, they are, yeah, so they are independent. Mm. That's how generally they are described. Now, contrary to what people think, the statistics show that the size of the floating voter public it's quite significant. It's almost about 25%. So I'm convinced that because of my disposition in politics, I am the type of candidate that the floating, the average floating voter has been waiting for. Mm. And if I'm a candidate, particularly an independent candidate, then that is a major part of my constituency. I didn't want us to get before into you the, break into, before you break into the, the, uh, into the, the where you came from yes, as in the MPP tradition. Absolutely, yes. Mm. You know, and there are people in NDC who believe that yes, uh, President Mahama is the uh, chosen uh, candidate, but they may think that uh, if there's a different or if they have an alternative, that it will be their preference. Then why not? Alan provides that alternative. But you do far more damage to the MPP than to the NDC. Well, um, I don't call it damage. Because uh, one thing I mean, that I... One thing you but, 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 but one thing that you, I You need, say you were a no, founding member of no, all that. But, uh, Evans... Anybody that is granted I, with the party? Uh, Evans, can I... Your good friend could you pay yesterday told me, yeah. look, there are people who may be following you because of how you use the word... Um, turmoil in the party right now. Yes. That clearly if that happens. SK Boafo yes. uh, is one who, at your event, yes. told us that he, he's in your camp. That is l one less vote for yes. the MPP. Yes. But, but, but why is that a problem? Because, because we are now... Fo my, I'm focusing on Ghana now. You see, I've served the party. Mm -hmm. I've been loyal to the party. It's time for me to move on and focus on Ghana. Is there a problem with that? Because after all, <laughs> it's Ghana. Whether you go through MPP or NDC, the focus is on Ghana. And so I don't see why we should see that as a damage to, uh, to MPP. If an MPP sympathizer believes that Alan provides the best opportunity for Ghana to move forward, mm. and he can remain in MPP, vote for his parliamentary candidate, but I believe that Alan is the one who will bring change and transformation to Ghana. And MPP will be part of it, NDC will be part of it, 
uh, you you never know you may become a part of my cabinet you know who knows so so why would why would you for example uh, not have the opportunity of being tapped your your talent being tapped into that's that's what i'm trying to understand i mean you're talking about talking about that by the way yeah you, you a lot of strong folks yeah. in the MPP backed you when you were campaigning. Oh, yeah. yeah this yeah. is still there. Um, some of them yeah. actually had come forward to say, they know, they, they, they disagree with you, they've supported you, yeah. but they don't want to follow you. Yes, it's understandable. They've deserted they're not, you. No, they they've not deserted me. Look, these are people who are representing constituents in Parliament on the ticket of the MPP. Mm. Alan, I have made a decision that I want to focus on Ghana. I've served my party honorably. And nobody can dispute that. There's no dispute about that. Yeah, the party but recommended you at the press conference. They commended me. You listened to that? Oh, yeah, I listened oh, to so that. that, 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 that That's why you listened. <laughs> so I'm, I've moved on. I want to serve Ghana. So I don't have a problem with them. And if somebody is a parliamentarian, who believed in my vision, but who is unable now to, to work with me only because he represents a, a constituents on a ticket of the MPP. I don't think there's any problem. It's not, uh, we shouldn't see it as desertion or anything like that. Have you spoken to some of them? Oh, yes. I mean, look, I actually um, realized right from the beginning that I should allow them, you know, to be able to serve their constituents. Because I have, I'm not floating a new party. I'm not floating mm. parliamentarians. I have, that's not what I'm seeking to do, mm. you know. So if they can still remain on the ticket of the MPP and when to go to parliament, why not? Uh, you I, have not tried to push them no, to join No, 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 I won't do that. I won't do that. I, I tell you how many are they? And how many votes do they control? But they have, they are, have their own constituencies that yeah, can yeah. come no, to no, your No, no, but age. how many years? I mean, let's face it. You're talking 17 million people are going to vote, you know. So I think that the right thing to do is for them still to serve their constituents, you know. And I'm promoting a government of national unity mm -hmm. where people from all walks of life, rich, poor, young, old, abled, disabled, or physically challenged, people from the business community, people from media, people from academia, those who have something to offer mm. to, to our country. I want us to have a united governance uh, mechanism and structure so that in parliament you have ministers who I have appointed from MPP, you have ministers who have appointed from NDC, from CPP, uh, people who are apolitical, and I believe that they have the competence and the talent to help Ghana. They are part of my cabinet, so we think together. It's one national agenda. So the national agenda is the great transformational plan. Mm. So we all work together, and we have programs, we take it to parliament. Mm. In Parliament, the base, there's no basis for quarrel because the representatives of MPP in Cabinet are there. And you require a majority of the ministers must, must come from Parliament. Yeah, yes, that, that's so not a problem. So what means that if you went, yeah, that's not the be problem. appointing people oh, no, from No, that's sides. not a problem. It's the same thing. You know, so 50% or more should come from Parliament. Some of them will come from the MPP. Some of them will come from the NDC, CPP, the smaller parties, people who are apolitical. You know, and I have 50, I would say 50 more, 50% 50 more ministers to kind of bring from uh, outside Very politics. Well. And the important thing to note is that because my movement is led by the youth, empowered by the youth, I've made a commitment that 60% of my cabinet ministers of government appointees will be young people. And 50% of those occupying senior positions will be women. So I'm just a transition candidate. My interest is to bring young people transition and women, a young woman, 
young, young people and women in particular, to the center of uh, our governance. But, but I'm curious, if, yeah. if what you said about your party's ability, yeah. you must spare a thought for those who back you who remain behind, because you talked about intimidation. Yeah. Don't they run a risk of being intimidated, possibly losing their seats, etc., because they backed you, if, if we believe what you said as a reason for leaving? Isn't that something that, you, you, that may keep you at, up at night, considering that they, they're left behind? Well, in, in actual fact, I think that, as some of them have done, they've also moved on. You know, Alan is no, no, more, no more in the party. Uh, so they have moved on. They are in the, in the MPP uh, now. There are a number of candidates. So they sign up for wherever they like. Mm. And so the issue of Alan hanging over, you know, uh, their, their own future, it does not arise. You think they won't suffer any consequence for their support of you whilst you were there, knowing your party? Well, um, I hope not. I mean, because um, I, I, I have moved on. They have made decisions that they want to stay, which is fine. And they are free to decide who they want to follow, you know. So I, I hope that uh, there won't be any, any more, you know, you said you used the word intimidation of, yes, of, of, yeah, of, your, of yes, your people. Yeah, yeah. Um, you believe now that you've gone, your people will be left alone? I'm saying that I'm hoping that, that you know. And, As to um, whether it will actually happen, you, <laughs> well, you will know. I wouldn't know, but I hope not. Mm. I hope not. I mean, we, we heard that they attempted to try to convince you not to do this. The, the national chairman came to you and, and appealed uh, about, to you about, not but, to look, do this. I've, I've said it in a previous interview. I don't like what the national chairman has put out. It's, it's disingenuous. And it's very unfortunate. He's a very good friend of mine. You are chairman of a party. You come to me to ask about whether I have any challenges with what is going on. I scope for you all the things that I believe have been going wrong. I've had personal conversations with him before. And he's aware of that. So he comes, I, I, I tell him that, look, I've complained about these things. You have not done anything about them. You know, so I'm reinforcing those concerns for your consideration. He actually confirms that, <laughs> well, Alan, you've been part of this and you know how our system works. So for you now to turn around and come and give a public, you know, statement about the fact that Oh, you come, everything was okay. I, th I find that to be very unfortunate. Did he come to you, though? No, he came to my office, yes. For example, I told the chairman that I contributed half a million Ghana cities so that we can have a credible voters' register. Because I believe that, look, if you have fair and transparent elections, if somebody emerges, everybody will follow him. Remember, I've gone through these primaries on three occasions with the current president. After our primaries, I'm his strongest cheerleader. I, I basically, I become one of his lead campaigners. So I don't play that kind of uh, politics. We compete. After that, we cooperate. You know. But if I'm going into this again, and I'm concerned about the voters' register, which is the basic document that will guarantee free, fair elections. And I put this, I make representations, I put this in writing. And I'm, I'm not sure that the, that the representations that I've made in respect of that are being taken seriously. Because, for example, Evans, how do you come out with let's say, what we call an album, a voter's uh, register, delegates register, and set up a committee to validate who is in the register or who is not, a committee. For me, the very simple exercise is that exhibit the, the register publicly in the constituencies, in the polling stations, 
can let every delegate verify whether it is in the register or not. Is that not what happens at the national level? You requested for this? Oh, yes, absolutely. Why should it be difficult for us to have an open public display of the register so that individuals can make a determination whether they are in the album or not? Why do you need a committee to verify an album? Now, I'm just saying that these and many other things were the subject of the kind of discussion. And he knows he cannot, in all sincerity, come and say that he came there and we didn't have a discussion on all these challenges. So it's not true that you told him that everything is fine? How, how is that possible? When I have identified uh, all these challenges, and it's not because he came to me. I'd been to his house myself months before and followed it up administratively with a letter to draw the attention to some of these things. And it's not just about the album. Look, I had serious challenges with some of the processes um, for the superdelegates conference. How is it that you set up a presidential elections committee hmm? chaired by a very distinguished uh, leader of our party, Professor Makokwe, and then you come out with guidelines for the conduct of the primaries. And then you indicate that in the event of a runoff, that the superdelegates who voted in the elections prior to the runoff would vote in the, would be the same people who vote in the runoff. These are guidelines that we all sign on to. We go through the superdelegates election. Well, fortunately, I'm part of the five, but there's a tie for the fifth position between Boache Jacon and then Adainibo. Straightforward matter. Let the rules work. Then the National Council sits and then make a, 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 make a determination or decide that they will set aside the rules that the aspirants have signed on to and that they will now become the delegates to decide on the runoff. Is that proper? Mm. Well, so, so I'm just saying that, look, I, I didn't want us to get into this, but, uh, well, since you, you no, asked, I, mean, I needed so, to... Yeah. So, so obviously you've... you've, you've um, have you spoken to the national chairman again since this? No? No, I, 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 nobody's a very good friend of mine. You, re you, know, you, look, you remain so? Oh, yes, yes. No, why not? You know, we come a long way. You're talking about the national chairman. Yes, yes, yes we come a long way. He, I Look, mean, he actually I mean, said that. Look, he it took him twenty years to get to the chairman, yeah. and then you should yeah. have just waited, waited a bit longer. Please. <laughs> I've moved on. <laughs> um, and and uh, since you're talking about your friends, yeah. um, another friend of yours, the president. Yes. How are you with him? Oh, look, we have a very good relationship. Still. Still, he must be very, look, still, very unhappy with you that you look, still, team. Uh, uh, No, uh, uh, well, he may be unhappy, but we've had a very good. In fact, and I, I don't mind saying this publicly, that because of the relationship that we've had, I've never, in all the instances where we competed, have had a problem in working to support him after the competition. You know, if if you have real deep-seated differences and you go into an election after that, you will probably require. But I've been a strong oh, But you require that in 2007. No, that is not the case. You know what I mean? You're telling your resignation to talk no, to... Now you, went, you see, now you are going 
you found another back room to you come know, that, into that's this a you know, That's a beautiful conversation. This it's, a, it's, a, look, it's a conversation. This one don't, don't, don't come through the back it's door. A, you know? it's, it's a beauty of conversation. No, By the way, no, no, you're no. listening to my exclusive interview with uh, we, Alain Chevante uh, look, uh, on we, Joy we, and we, on, on, we, on the Journey Channel. We Shana. agreed that... No, no, no. I mean, so, it's a conversation. No. We're talking about your friend. No, no, your no. Friend. But, no, but I'm saying that, look, I've moved on. I've moved on. Yeah. I've went... I've worked, but, but you're on good I've, terms I've, with I've him. Very good terms, you know. Has I've he called you in, since? Monday? No, no, but uh, he's been out of the country. I, I, so, uh, yeah, no, but did you uh, hint him? Did you hint him at all? For, sorry, did you hint him that? No, well, we can't discuss this openly. Yes. So, so I assume you did, <laughs> and I'm sure he wasn't happy with you that, Look, that you decided why, to go. Why, why are you trying to get into our relationship? <laughs> I don't want to be between us, they say. I don't want to come between you and him. But, 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 you, but you say the relationship still remains Oh, there's, yeah, Yes, absolutely. I mean, and uh, uh, I mean, we've worked well, very well together. You know, I was the first person he appointed as, uh, as, as, as You're the as first minister. person he actually announced way before yeah, you were contested. Way, way yes. before, you know, so we remain very good friends. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and that will remain? Even yeah, as and, an and, and I have many other good friends in, in cabinet. And... It will remain, yes. Yeah, yeah. Although they'll be very unhappy with you. I, I know. Very, very unhappy <laughs> with you. Um, the the John Ajikum Kufo. Yesterday I spoke to Kujo Pioni, I'll, I'll repeat that again. Okay. And he makes the point that on air, so I can repeat this, that okay. uh, Kufo had called him yesterday and said, look, Kujo Pioni was traveling yesterday. Mm. He says, uh, if he returns, he should come and see him. So they talk about, about you. Yeah. Did you, yeah. did you. Did you consult the old man. I, I, I don't want us to be discussing personal relationships and personal matters, you know. In, in, I, I only asked that because yeah. of the role he played. Uh, no, that's what I'm in saying. In 2007, that, you know, we, I mean, we've been working together very closely, you know, since. The, in fact, I mean, saying because you know he was a leading member of the party uh, right from the beginning, and we've been working together since 1992. Mm. So it, and, and we remain, I mean... It, it goes without saying that he would have known about this. And well, uh, uh, let's, let's move on. Like I'm saying, this is not the subject of our uh, interview. This is a final one. Then, he, yes, he, okay. He, he, he may, was he happy? Must, must not no. be happy. Who is that? And Kujo Pini yesterday no, told me that. that. Kujo Pini told me. That yeah. this, this one publicly, so this one I can tell you. Uh, you told, that, you it, interviewed it, him? Yes, please, I did. Oh, and, and, okay. then, and then he said on, on air okay. that... Uh, you didn't consult him, but if you did, I you'd have told you. Him. Could you pay me? Now, if, uh, if you had told him, you'd yeah. have told you not to stay and fight. Those are his words. He should stay and fight. I should stay and fight. Yes. That's well, what he said. That you. is his view. Yeah, that, that's, the, he was saying that I should have stayed. <laughs> if, if you had consulted him, yes. he would have told you to stay and fight. So Kojo Pianin made a public declaration that we did not have, have a discussion. Is that what you're saying? Oh, well, on national television, PM Express yesterday, and people watched us on okay. air, and I asked him that. He says, you know, you didn't consult him. But if you did, if you did, he would have told you to. And I asked him, so why? Do you support him? Do you support this issue? He says he's no opposed to it. Um, but he wouldn't support it either. But if he had, <laughs> but, but, but if well, you have told him, he would have told you, he would have, but he would have told let, you not let, to stay yeah, and fight. Yeah, but what is the point? Staying and fight and fighting. Yes. For what purpose? Look, I mean, uh, and I'm sorry. I mean, because I didn't listen to the interview. Fair enough. I didn't, so I cannot make a comment on it. Yeah. You know. But I'm just re repeating but, what, yeah, what he has yeah. told. But us. I'm surprised if you said he made a public statement that we had no discussion on this matter. But that's fine. But I'm saying that uh, I have moved on. I've been a loyal member of this party with a distinguished record as a member of the National Executive, member of the National Council, a member of several of the most important committees. I was chairman of the Young Executive Forum, uh, which was the backbone of the party, financial backbone of the party. I've served in uh, President Kofor's government as oh, ambassador you've also had to the, the United States. On that, on that point, it just, because it just came up, you mentioned it. You, we had Hackman say that the, this assertion you made about investment is not true. Uh, look, uh, Evans, now you found another... Oh, just because to, you mentioned no, it. No, because... Just because you mentioned it. Because you were making a statement about why I did not stay in the and fight. In fight, I mean, based on and, what... And, and I, yes, I was telling you that, look, I've served the party loyally and with distinction. I've served in the government. 
it's time for me to move on to serve my country in another capacity. Is that a problem? I mean, I'm trying to understand why that is a problem. If you are saying, Kujumpian, he says I should stay to fight what? I mean, what is it to fight about? You, you understand me? But like I said, I did not listen to the interview, so I'm not sure what angle mm. uh, which, or which angle he was coming from. But I'm saying that people must understand where I'm coming from. I've served the party. I've served my government. I believe that God has given me <coughs> talents that I can offer in service to the people of Ghana at the highest level of executive authority. And that's what I'm asking the people of Ghana to give me a chance to do that. You know, is there anything wrong with that? I mean, I would have wished that maybe I would have used that same vehicle. But there are different ways of getting to my destination. So I don't think that we should take this uh, as, as a problem. You know, I've moved on. And the party will also move on. Mm. I mean, it clearly, sir, it's too late for any conversation to happen about <laughs> Alan. That's what you meant. You, you like uh, to get back into the game. <laughs> I, 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 I guess I guess I'm I'm picking a few a few tricks from your book. Then. You are picking tricks from me. A few tricks from you. Yes. I, I mean, it, isn't that what we, the young men are supposed to do? Learning from the old, finding a way to get back in the game. Um, I, I mean, we cannot end as we end without talking about your home region, Ashanti region, which many say is going to be very important yeah. for you in particular yeah. going into the elections. Now that you are standing yeah. by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Is that overstated when people hear and say, Shandri is going to be very important for you, also going to be important for your party, but for you in particular, yeah. is that overstated or is the reality? Well, it's reality. I mean, the Ashanti region has been the backbone of our party, is our stronghold, you know. So it's going to be important for the NPP as a party getting into the general election. As an independent candidate, my wish will be that Ashanti region will put their weight behind me. I've always been very popular in Ashanti region, uh, in Central region, and many parts of the country. It doesn't so, seem so, so I mean, when I look at the outcome yes, but, but, of the superdelegates in Ashanti I, region. I, I, I don't know which... Why did they vote for you but, as much? Yeah, but that's why I'm saying that let's understand that superdelegates or even uh, delegates in general constitute only a small percentage, not more than even 3%, of those who would vote for MPP in a general election. That is the constituency that we should be talking about. In Ashanti alone, we are talking over almost 2 million people. You know, So that's what we are talking about. I mean, and frankly, let's focus on Ghana, on the mm. Ghana agenda. Yeah. So, Almost invariably, it's likely that December 2024, you, you see three faces on the ballot paper. John Mahama, because he's already been selected. Maybe Baumia, maybe Canada, Japan, or Francis Dynamo, it doesn't matter which of them. And then there'll be Alan Shamatin on this ticket. Now, I'm saying that there are four critical considerations judging by the voter psychology in Ghana. Four critical considerations. Out of these, let's say, out of these three people, first consideration, vision. Which of these three people have demonstrated a drag record for vision in terms of what they have done? So whether it is uh, Ex-President Mahama or Baumia. Now, if that is the criteria that they are going to use in terms of vision, then I'm in the game. Mm. The next one, competence. Between the three, if that is what is going to be the basis for judging, I'm in the game. Integrity. 
I'm in the game. Action, which is the last one. I'm in the game. So what are we talking about? Vision, competence, integrity, and action. If these are the four critical considerations that would make Ghanaians decide on these three characters who would appear on the ballot paper, then start thinking about Alan being the first independent candidate to ascend to the presidency in Ghana. Mm. Well, we've interrogated that vision a, a, a fair bit. Um, in, a, a, and of course, as for integrity, the judges will be, will the, be people. the people. Yes, so let's wait for that. On, on that day. Yes. yes when you, when you yes. decide. But you have to choose a running mate. To run. We'll, we'll, we'll cross the bridge. Are you applying Should I? for consideration? Should I? Ah. Since Are you said, applying? I'm asking. I, I'm asking what I should. <laughs> Should I? No, but actually, I will get to the bridge. We'll cross the bridge when we get there. Should I guess? You say you're going to be youthful. Yes. Well, should that, would that person be youthful? That would be my first priority. Because I see myself as a transitional candidate. You know, or as, as a transitional president. No, I, this is not window dressing. I sincerely believe in what I'm doing. Putting the youth at the front and center of the campaign. Because let's face it. Out of the 17 million people who are registered voters, 55%, that's 9.4 million, are young people aged between 18 and 35. Mm. So if you look at the demographics, they are the most important voter block. 55% are young people. If you look at the other considerations, they call it the future of our country in terms of energy, in terms of their capacity for innovation, their ability to adapt, and just raw intelligence, you know, because of the dynamics of the world that we live in. Yeah. I cannot find a, a better way to, you know, advance the course of this of this country than putting young people uh, so at certainly, the center of my campaign. Um, uh, yeah. Alan Chamantin's running mate will be a young person. It will be so. Yeah, at least you've confirmed one thing about that person. Yes. Um, anyway, we wish you all the best in this endeavor. Um, history says the odds are stuck up against you, as we've interrogated at the beginning, because nobody had done what you say you would do. And the moment many have questioned, it's not even here yet for Ghanaians to swing from MPP yeah. and NDC and give the nod to Yeah, but, but that's, that's, that, that, is, uh, that, that is what you are saying, or who is saying that? Well, the moment. <laughs> what, when you say the moment, what is the moment? Well, you... I, allow the people of Ghana to make that decision yeah. and judgment. I was coming that the so, moment will be so, the so, moment of December 7. No, no. The moment will really be December 7, 2024. That, that you can't say that it is not there yet because you the, believe the, the presumption is that um, that Ghana is not ready. Mm. That's the presumption. You believe Ghana is? No, I don't believe that. Why would I believe that? Why would I then put myself up? So you believe Ghana so, so, is ready? Uh, so yeah. I, I think that... Um, because we don't want to close the interview on that, though, because you have no basis for making that judgment on behalf of Ghanaians. You believe Ghana let's, is ready let, let for an independent candidate? Let the make a decision. Mm. And I think that if I have the honor and privilege of becoming the first independent candidate to ascend to the presidency, that would be a watershed development in Ghana. And it would be a major signal for political transformation and economic transformation on the continent of Africa. Alan Chamante, we wish you the best. Thank you. The people will be it. the ultimate judges. Yes, very much so. Yes. And you've just been listening to Alan Kojo Chamante, uh, my guest on Joy News Live, also on Joy 99.7 FM. Um, well, as you've heard him say, you have to be the ultimate judges of his credentials and his ability to lead if he puts himself up, and he says he will, 
for next year's general elections. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you again. Thank you.